Salut à tous, ici Dom pour Culture FPV. Je suis super excité de partager avec vous cette interview. C'est un, un moment que j'attends depuis un petit moment et j'avais promis à David que je ferais tout mon possible pour l'obtenir, cette interview. C'est un pilote pour lequel j'ai énormément d'estime, à la fois pour sa personnalité, pour son pilotage. Et je suis sûr que c'est une grosse source d'inspiration pour beaucoup d'entre vous. Alors il faut savoir qu'on a passé une nuit blanche avant cette interview pour pouvoir aller sur un spot que vous verrez probablement dans son prochain montage et donc il a quand même eu la gentillesse malgré la fatigue, malgré l'épuisement d'assurer cette interview de manière super professionnelle. On passe tout de suite à l'interview, j'attends vos questions dans les commentaires. Johnny FPV en chair et en os. Thank you so much, Johnny, for agreeing for this interview. Of course, man. It's uh, we had a great time uh, together, and um, I thought we would share with the, the French community this uh, interview, so they mm -hmm. they know a little bit what you're up to. So I think it's your second time in France, right? Yeah, second time, uh, third time actually. Third so time? the first two times, one was DCL and the other was a I think it was DR1, I don't know. <laughs> how, how do you um, like French so far? Oh, especially <laughs> today, you took me to some amazing places. Yeah, it was a Right over day. Monaco. Um, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's summer, the weather's incredible. So really good vibes and just having an amazing time. Did you have time to visit Paris when you went there? I, I went through Paris on the way to get here at a connecting flight in Paris and I lost my laptop, so. Oh. I don't like Paris right now. But. <laughs> well, south of France is better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The Paris people will hate me now. It's okay. <laughs> no, Paris is amazing. And you travel quite a lot in, in Europe already. Yeah, I've seen like the best videos of my life <laughs> watching you uh, in the mountains in Austria. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah that, was, uh, that was the first time I was ever in... Uh, not the first time, but one of the first times I was ever in Europe and that was all in Austria with Uh, Rents and FPV, he took me yeah, all Renson. over. Um, and that was the first time I ever did long range, and that sort of like that and sparked. You nailed it, you nailed <laughs> it for the first time. That like made some fire in me. It, uh, it just made me fall in love with uh, capturing the scenery versus just the tricks. So okay. I think that kind of was the start of when I moved into more uh, cinematic flying, I guess you could call it. Yeah. More focusing on the scenery again and just the beauty around us. So. Yeah, that was huge for me. But you still fly some freestyle? And oh, of course, of course. And uh, the style that you somehow created, I think, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and that many people li like doing and uh, are inspired by this style. And how, how did it come to, um, how did, did it appear? I mean, where did you find the, the inspiration to, yeah, to create yeah. a style? Um, it's, a, it's a hard question to nail, like I don't think there's any specific reason or idea I had to create something new, it's just when I started flying that was kind of naturally what I was doing, I was trying different things with like, you know, yaw, throwing flicks in there, I guess we call them, mm -hmm. and again it wasn't one thing, it was just a lot of practice and a lot of just flying for fun in tight areas. I th actually, I think that's one of the main things, flying in tight areas, so you force yourself to get comfortable flying around trees, other obstacles, and that kind of led to like all the, uh, you know, the, the rewinds around the trees yeah. and the, the... And you need a lot of control, so yeah, the environment. Exactly, yeah. it definitely helped, and I guess it kind of just turned into what it is today, and now other people are turning it into their own little you know, versions of it, so yeah, but it's, it's the, amazing. Yeah, it's, it's really, I'm amazed by the way you inspire people, and I know you're a hard worker. From what I see, you, you work very hard on on finding uh, the new tricks, the new style, the, the way you, you work on the image, the, mm -hmm. the colors and everything, and 
it's very inspiring for us all. And I know the French community has a lot of fans of your of your work. Yeah. So, so I think they'll be happy to to have this kind of uh, of interview. Yeah. Thank you, man. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's uh, it's crazy to think people enjoy what I do, um, and it it fuels me. You know, it inspires me, just like uh, it might inspire some other people to go out and create. It just motivates me to continue it and to try some new things and to try and, you know, turn. FPV is already something very special. Yeah. We all really enjoy it, but to try and evolve it into something even bigger, involve, you know, this type of cinematography, videography, whatever you want to call it, and, uh, you know, standard film production, and just see where it can take me, see what, uh, see what it becomes. Yeah, you, there was a, a switch in your style I think beginning of 2017, mm -hmm. where you, you slowly began to add more cinematic feel in your videos. Yeah, yeah. And was it something that, like the same thing as the, the, the juicy style, it came, <laughs> it came or did you, um, like you watched some movies and you said, I want to do some things like that? How right, did it right. come to your mind? Yeah, I think the more cinematic was uh, a little more like, I guess a decision just to try and make my content and videos uh, not necessarily more appealing to a broader audience but just uh, sometimes all the tricks and flips and <laughs> juicy style as you said can get a little uh, repetitive a little old so to spice it up add some variety my ears are popping here as we're descending <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I like I watch a lot of uh, just normal videography yeah. on YouTube. There's a lot of amazing like travel content creators, and to again just try and try and uh, evolve FPV into something more than just you know trickery to just try yeah, that, and that's integrate one thing. it. Thing you're always trying to evolve in your style and right. find new moves, new ways of, of filming. Yeah, I think that's really important to always try and evolve, keep uh, keep it interesting. And I, that's the standard evolution of anything, really. You've got to keep pushing what we have forward, and um, it's because of that, it's turning into something really awesome. Yeah. There's new pilots like that I, I'm noticing every week that are really taking um, their own unique way of like recording and filming with uh, racing drones and turn it into their own style. And there's amazing content coming out, so yeah. it's really awesome. It's true. Even even like people who are not flying for a long time and they 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 master the, the skills right. quite quite fast and uh, are there any french pilots you like or you have been following yeah well just like you said the new guys there's one i, I might mess up his <laughs> name i think it's nicholas gaia yes yeah. that that's that's the one that's i he he's one of the new pilots like you said only been flying for a week but he's taking his videography and like cinemat cinematography background and then taking or adding drone racing, adding uh, FPV footage to it. So he's a guy who's been editing normal camera work, uh, DJI drone footage, and then adding this. And it just, yeah, what, I, what he's creating is incredible. Yeah. And only fine for a week. It's uh, so stuff like that, stuff like that. And then obviously there's, I, I couldn't even name all the amazing freestyle pilots who. Um, I've seen on, online and who are pushing the freestyle limits here and uh, so it's really awesome. And I know you sometimes you comment on some new pilots. You commented once on my video, I think it was the first on Rob Riot. Yeah, yeah. And it feels so amazing when when you comment someone that is starting and you know he posted he, he posts his video on, on, on YouTube or on Facebook just to know what people think and then yeah. Johnny comes and says man you you have a nice video it feels very good <laughs> I, I can tell you I, I know the feeling so I'm happy to hear that man that's uh that. yeah no I love it it's all about the community <laughs> I guess yeah. at the end of the day and just doing all this together and sharing it and we all build off of each other so we're all pushing uh, each other to new limits and uh that's cool. yeah so you your your motors came out I think it's almost a year ago, is it? Um, a, a not year? quite. Not so quite. They, I think they came, let me think for a second. They came out, I would say, I want to say five or six months ago. So yeah. at the start of the year. I, I fly your motors 
all the time and I recommend people just buy the motors and, <laughs> and, and try them, you'll get amazed. Um, so it, it was a, a, a long development you had. Uh, yeah, it took, it took a long time to figure out the KV and size I wanted. So when I started, the, it took about a year from the initial like, thought of having a motor with Lumineer to actually having it made and selling it. So in that time, I went from like usually using a 2206, maybe around 2,500 kV. And in that year, I really realized um, that the higher kV uh, really suits the style I like. And it helps with uh, the, those flicks and the popping. And for freestyle, I think it just works incredibly well. I, and that, I agree. I, I, I tried the motors. I was <clears throat> skeptical on the high KV, and then once I tried them, because uh, my my buddy uh, Tom's, he, he told me, I think you, your your style will be better if you have a high KV. So right, right. I, he recommended your motors, and I tried them, and I agree that it gives this pop feeling that no other um, KV gave me. To, right, to, right. And the size as well, I think just having the extra torque. Um, and many people think it's super inefficient to have a motor like this. And sometimes it can be like if you're at high throttle the entire time, mm -hmm. maybe it's you're going to have some uh, shorter flight times. But the way I fly, we were just flying like 30 minutes ago, I was getting some five, six minute flights yeah, on. So 1300 packs. I was amazed. This is this was crazy. We we you you find four minutes or even five minutes, almost all the time with high throttle, and it kept very good. Yeah, and some some of the packs did come down quite low, yeah. but generally speaking, I think four minutes is like the standard flight time. So, That's right. um, yeah, again, just you can't go crazy on the throttle, but. Mm -hmm. If you switch it up, you know, you could add some full throttle pops in there and it uh, doesn't kill the pack, so. Okay. And do you, do you have any other products that you, you think are coming that you, you can talk about without uh, <laughs> yeah, compromising for sure. your... <laughs> for sure. The, um, I'm, I'm working on a frame with AstroX. AstroX, uh, I think they make some of the nicest frames in the world, just the carbon and attention to detail. Mm -hmm. uh, Buwon Jian from uh, South Korea, he's the... He's behind all the designs, so I've been working on a, a little frame with him for a while now, and uh, not not quite ready, but should be out. I don't know in a month or two, and uh, really excited. It's a uh, kind of the same like freestyle uh, format that we've been used to, but uh, some twists on it, some new fresh twists on it. So you added um, your, your own um, like pluses in the, in the design? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit lighter than the X5, for example, um, smaller in some regards, so okay. I think it's a great freestyle frame, and you could also use it to race since it's a little bit lighter. Um, so that'll be here in a couple months, but was, really excited for it. Was it harder to design the frame or the motors, or how, what, what's the hardest work you had between the two uh, products? I think um, th the frame process has gone a little faster, but I think it's pretty similar since you need to test and uh, like crash test and just uh, flight performance test to make sure it's um, how you want it to feel, make sure it feels good with different uh, flight controllers. So uh, with KISS, with Race Flight, with Beta Flight, I've been testing uh, a little bit of each just to make sure it, it works, you know, it works pretty well with all of them, uh, but about the same. And um, my, well, my last question will be, how, how do you see the future of uh, FPV? Is, have you thought about it already? Or? <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's, uh, as you know, it's evolving pretty quickly with the technology. And hopefully we haven't reached like a stagnant point where it kind of tapers off. But I, with flying, I think, um, I think a lot of people are gonna make, uh, we're starting to see it, but like a little bit of a focus on more um, you know, smoother cinematic style things. People are going to try and integrate FPV footage into uh, the commercial film world. That's something I'm that really awesome. passionate about and that, that I'm pushing for. Um, but I don't know, who knows? Um, there might be bigger drones. Uh, who knows? It's going to be exciting, but yeah. uh, I, I'm here for the ride. So. Yeah, the, 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 the evolution, like the very fast paced evolution, is, is very exciting. And I think we're going to see many nice things, and I'm yep, I'm yep. so happy that you are putting a, a, a foot in the production world, and I hope you can succeed in that in that field. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Okay, that's about it. Uh, do you have any other things? Maybe I don't know. Do you um, want to talk about? <laughs> I'm just looking as we're driving here. This place is beautiful. I wish I could spend more time here. <laughs> Man, you're welcome anytime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anytime. I think uh, every everyone who met you here, I were, were amazed about how kind you are and how skilled you are and thank you man and it's a, it was a, it was a pleasure really thank you very much voilà pour cette inter interview je remercie encore Johnny de, de, de s'être prêté au jeu de l'interview euh, on lui souhaite un bon retour et euh, on vous dit à bientôt cool